So last week, the headlines screamed that the CIA had broken encryption on WhatsApp and Signal. That turned out to be not so true. And who cares anyway, because it's a new week and we've all forgotten about WikiLeaks. But you know who hasn't forgotten about helping people protect their privacy? Gabriel Weinberg, founder of DuckDuckGo. Welcome to the show, Gabriel. Hello, my pleasure. <laughs> so you started DuckDuckGo in 2008, which was long before the Snowden, Re Snowden revelations. Um, tell us a little bit about what it is and what made you decide to start it. Sure. So DuckDuckGo is a search engine and we don't track you. So we're like Google, except that when you search on DuckDuckGo, you're completely anonymous. Um, and yeah, I started it a long time ago in tech years now, <laughs> about a decade ago. Um, originally, just I was actually fed up with Google results for different reasons. Um, back in 2008, if you remember, there was a lot of spam in the results um, and they lacked instant answers. And so we got ahead on both of those fronts. Um, but after I released it, I started really investigating search privacy and really realized that, A, you actually don't need to track people to make money in web search. You can make money just based on the keywords that they type in. And Google is an advertising network, so they need to track you across the whole web. Like you were talking about YouTube earlier. That's why you keep seeing the same you know, YouTube ads following you around after you did some searches. Whereas on DuckDuckGo, we, don't, we just run a search engine. We don't run an advertising network. And so we can run search results without tracking you at all. Um, and that's just a better user experience. So uh, you recommend, you, we found you because you had some tips on, on uh, privacy on the, your iPhone. Uh, one of the things that you recommend is resetting your advertising identifier um, from time to time. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so DuckDuckGo is actually built into the iPhone. And that's one of the reasons why, you know, we, we put the list together because the iPhone um, takes the privacy pretty seriously, as, you know, everyone knows from the Apple FBI case last year. But to answer your question specifically, they have an advertiser identifier that's built into the iPhone that lets apps, um, how they kind of track you across apps, advertising networks. And you can actually reset this um, if you go into, uh, you're shown on the screen now, if you go into a particular part of the settings, you can reset it as much as you want. Now, what's really interesting is that, and the reason you might want to do that is not just to get people to stop from tracking you, but actually that, um, there's another setting called limit ad tracking, and that's actually uh, on, it's, a, it's voluntary from the app provider, whether they're going to honor that or not. And so to get around that kind of voluntary system, you want to keep uh, resetting that advertiser identifier. So everything around um, search, you know, we're so used to the Google, Yahoo, whatever model, which is, as you, as you were saying just a few minutes ago, based around advertising largely and around tracking user behavior and monetizing that through advertising. DuckDuckGo, of course, doesn't do advertising in that way. How, how do you make it worth it for you as, as a business? Like, how do you end up monetizing the service that way? Yeah, so DuckDuckGo is actually profitable. We've been profitable for several years. We actually syndicate Yahoo and Microsoft advertising. What people don't realize is even on Google, they make most of their money off the search engine itself just based on the keyword you type in. So you type in mortgage, you get a mortgage ad. And so it's really a myth that anyone needs to track you to make money in web search. It's the, it's the lucrative place because of that search intent. Really all that tracking is because of all these other, you know, ad networks that Google runs, you know, AdSense and AdMob. Um, a recent study showed from Princeton, um, looked at the top million websites and apps and found Google trackers on 75% of them. Um, and so it really is just um, people think it's about the search engine, but it really has nothing to do with the search engine. Hmm. So you don't uh, you don't track any. So if I use DuckDuckGo, what information like what are my my privacy expectations? Like, do you take any information from me at all? No, zero information. We have no account. Um, we throw away IP addresses. And so really every time you search on DuckDuckGo, it's like you've never been there before from our perspective. You're completely anonymous. And the same goes for DuckDuckGo on mobile and the iPhone app or the Android app? That's right. Uh, you can use our apps on mobile. We're also actually built in as a search engine option on the iPhone. So if you actually go to the search engine settings for Safari, we're one of the four providers there in the U.S. So, I mean, DuckDuckGo has a great, um, great reputation when it comes to, you know, being trustworthy around privacy. I mean, obviously, that's, that's the specialty of what you do uh, with your search engine. 
Um, I, there are a lot of services. There are a lot of sites, a lot of VPNs, for example, that all claim that they are respecting privacy of users. But, but it's really kind of impossible for a user to truly know. I mean, that's got to be one of the biggest challenges for you guys is, is building up that trust. How did you attack that? Yeah, I think you build trust with transparency um, and being a thought leader in the space. And then there's also, you know, being around for a long time and then where you are um, with your privacy policy. So, you know, we have a very explicit and clear privacy policy. And time and time again, if you're found to violate that, especially in the U.S., you can get in, in big trouble. Um, and if you're if you're intentionally kind of misleading about it, you can ultimately um, get into serious penalties. Um, and so with all that behind us, we've built a lot of trust. Um, you know, we, part of the reason you found us with our iPhone tips, we have a blog called spreadprivacy.com where we're out there just trying to help people protect their privacy and kind of wade through all that noise that you're kind of referring to there. And so we're out there trying to like, you know, help identify the best things for you to download. So there's some people in our chat room discussing uh, incognito mode on Chrome. And uh, it's nice that you talk about transparency because one of the people in our tra chat room which, who was talking about this just uh, said they were part of the DuckDuckGo staff. So thank you for that. Very transparent. <laughs> uh, but uh, so I'm wondering if you could just talk a little bit about the difference between uh, incognito mode on Chrome and DuckDuckGo. Yeah, this is, a, this is another one of these myths that we have a uh, blog post on spreadpowers.com. We actually ran a survey with about 5,000 Americans and 75%, I think 77% overestimated the privacy they're getting from incognito mode. People think that when you go incognito, you're somehow anonymous. But in reality, it's just actually blocking stuff off of your local computer. All the sites that you visit, including Google, can still be tracking you, saving all your searches. Um, your ISP can still see where you go. Um, it really is just your local computer. Um, and so some of the misconceptions people have about private browsing mode is that their searches will not be saved or seen by their ISP or search engine. It's simply not the case. So if you really want to be anonymous, you actually have to kind of use services that don't track you or add another layer on top, you know, like a VPN or Tor. Um, I imagine you probably feel pretty strongly about this one. Um, shouldn't, <laughs> shouldn't, shouldn't all search engines be be privacy focused? I mean, it, it really seems like this in this day and age, information can be weaponized so easily. Uh, there's just a lot to there's a there's a lot for people to lose. What do you think about that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you think about it, you know, people have gotten a little more um, nuanced about what they share on social media, but they're still not really thinking about their search privacy as much, like even though you're typing kind of your medical and financial problems directly into your search engine. So yeah, absolutely. I mean, we were kind of ahead um, in a lot of these areas, especially on encryption. And over time, you know, the search engines adopted encryption kind of like we did early on. Um, now we're really pushing for, you know, private browsing modes in particular to at least adopt a no tracking search engine, because I think it's, the whole mode is misleading to people, as we just talked about. Um, so that would be the next logical step, from my opinion, mm -hmm. is when you offer someone a private option to make sure it's, it's actually uh, totally private. So I, I read a piece uh, in Wired, in the UK Wired last month, where uh, you said you were interviewed and you said that you maybe were expanding beyond browsing. You didn't give any details about what, uh, what you might be expanding to, but do you care to share anything now? Um, I'm not breaking any news for you, but the um, big idea is that when you click on a search result now, even though you're anonymous on DuckDuckGo, you know, you're going off to these other sites where you're less anonymous. And so we offer um, or suggest that you download additional add-ons that protect you. But we really like to be more of that solution for you. What we've really found is most people want privacy. They want to be have less of a digital footprint online, but they just don't know how to get it. And they don't want a lot of sacrifice. They want, it, they want it simple and easy. And so we want to give that to them. We're giving that in search right now, but we want to make it more of their whole browsing experience. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Gabriel Weinberg is the founder of DuckDuckGo. Uh, where can people follow um, your work online? Um, you can follow us at, um, at DuckDuckGo on Twitter. I'm at Yegg, Y-E-G-G. And then the blog I mentioned is spreadprivacy.com. All right. Thanks Fantastic. so much. Thank you, Gabriel.
Have a great night. My pleasure. Thank you. Take care.